Hello, Amanda here from Faithfully Homemade, and today I'm going to talk to you about the books that I use with my kindergartner. Um, what books we use and what we really like. Um, in my last video I did for the Virtual Homeschool Co-op, I talked about um, video, uh, uh, all sorts of books that I use for, my, for all my kids, but today I just wanted to focus on my kindergartner. And so um, we really love the Abeka books. And so I have a basket here, and these are the kindergarten Abeka readers. And let me just show you the first one. So the first reader, um, they just give them some short vowel words with some pictures. And so he has passed this one. But um, yeah, but this one is a lot of fun because it, it's just short vowel words, so they're learning um, just to read some words. And then they get a little bit harder, and I, for some reason, can't find my level, my book B. But I'll show you book C you, you me, and see how it gets a little bit trickier because they're they're adding more than just CVC words. They're adding two letters and so and then they add sentences. So um, these are a lot of fun. We really like the A back of books. I have all of this one. Yeah, um, I have all the kindergarten ones, and I used them with my how other can children. You so that's out why. The one? why yeah. You? Can we put it back here? This but one's, this one's D. So it has my other kids' names on them and stuff. Mom, um, and I think that's why I'm missing the B. You do? A P? Yeah. Pink um, and then, I also, last year, he did the A Becca um, K4. Uh, he's only four years old. Um, but he's doing kindergarten because last year when he was three, I did the four-year-old program with him, and he's just ready. So, so he will not turn five until the very last day of February. Um, but I started him in kindergarten anyways. Um, I started him in kindergarten anyways, and so that's where he is. But last year we did um, the K-4 program, so these are all the ABECA books for K-4. And they start out really easy if you're interested in, in those. I really liked it. Like, this is the very first one, so when they're four years old, they start out just saying the sounds. Mark, can you? Okay, you can hold that. Um, so, you know, if for inchworm, off for ostrich. So these books are um, really good for just very, very early readers. And I've actually been using these with my two-year-old right now um, just because he knows he, he knows the letters, so I can say what letters that, capital I, lowercase i. And then I've been introducing him to some of the sounds. Um, so uh, anyway, so uh, we really like the a, whoop, the a Becca books. So those are the K4 and then the K4. K-5 is the kindergarten books here, and they're, they increasingly get more difficult as you go. Um, right now, my son is working in book C, so it is October, he's in kindergarten, and now I know in the ABECA curriculum they're not in this yet, but I have him working um, with me, and he's in this book right now. So we're doing that one, and like I said, he's four, but... He is ready. Um, some children probably wouldn't be ready yet. I don't think all my kids would have been ready at this age for you know that book. But then um, I also uh, bought the um, A Becca. Like they have a separate uh, set of just a bunch of readers, and so I bought those. And that's what these are. And some of them are you know obviously difficult. He can't read any of that yet but he will be able to eventually and um what i do right now is i just read them to him so i have all of these and these are this is the old set and then the new set looks like this i also got the new set and these are what the new ones look like they're just a little bit different um and some of them are bible stories okay um some of them are easier than others obviously he can't read any of that yet but i can still read him read it to him and eventually he will get into it um so I bought all of those, and then I also have like a phonics Clifford, uh, the dog set, and these are more. Um, they say phonics fun, but I wouldn't say they're really phonics based because um, a lot of it uses a lot of sight words, words that they have to know, you know. So now this would be um, easy to sound out, like am. They need to know I, and then you could tell them the, the name Clifford. This one has some pictures. Um, so this one, this one's easy actually, but some of these I felt like was more of a, they were more sight word-ish than they are necessarily phonics. Like, 
friends. Um, I just felt like it had more, it was more focusing on sight words. But anyway, so you get the idea. These ones are like a Clifford pack, and I think I got these from Scholastic. So we haven't used too much of those, but I do have those. I used them more with my other kids. I just have a couple other books in here um, that he likes. And then I also have the Phonics uh, Osborne books. And I have the whole set of the Osborne Phonics readers. And I like them, however, uh, they too add in a lot of things like like looking at the title of this fat cat on a mat you would think that it would be focusing on short a words but then when you get into it it has all sorts of long vowel sounds in here too like c's and b it has um, short u it has like more long e words um look it has the word shout which they wouldn't know that word yet because it has a special sound so although the, the stories are really fun and i like that they flip out like some of the pages um you know flip out so they really like that because then they can like flip the page out and see what's going to come next um however i have to help him a lot with these books because see more long vowels so they can't really get into these phonics readers until they're farther along um and they know all of their long vowel sounds and until they've done some with special sounds like look at this good catch tch is a special sound um so I don't know if they just wanted, when they were making these phonics readers, they were making them for older kids, like past um, kindergarten, first grade. Because this to me, well, no, this would be like first grade to me. So um, so just keep that in mind if you're going to get the Osborne phonics readers. They're fun, um, but I would say they're, they're kind of past kindergartners because they add in a lot of special sound type, uh, special phonics sounds in them. But um, I do like those, and we have read, I have read them with my kindergartner. I just have to help him a lot. Um, and, of course, again, remember, he's only four, and he's at the beginning of kindergarten. So I also have a set of um, Scooby-Doo books. These are another Scholastic set, like you saw the Clifford books. But these ones are... Um, Stop it! Whoops, you're dropping them. Leave them like that. These ones are focusing more like on um, sight words, actually. I, like I know the other ones... These ones actually no. Where? Oh, I. You know what? It was because I pulled them out to use sight words because one of them had a lot of the word had the in it, and so we were using that as a sight word book. Um, but yeah, we read these every once in a while. These are over his reading level right now too. But um, he loves Scooby Doo, so we actually use those more than the Clifford ones. Um, then. I'm doing fine. No. With a Becca, um, we also use the handbook for reading, which I use every single day. He has to read a page out of here. And this just gets them, um, it, it helps them with phonics. So, again, um, it starts out with, well, it starts out with vowel, vowel sounds, but then, again, it starts out with just short vowel words. Um, and so he's done all of these pages so far. And then it has just some, like, reviews so he can review sounds. And I really do like this book. Um, he's learned, you know, a lot of his blends, and so then it takes him through practicing blends and putting them into words. And so each day we just do one page of this book. Now this book, if you have this book, um, the reason they have the shapes up here is because you can have them read down. So you could say, read all the words underneath the yellow circle, or they have numbers, so you can have them read across. Read all the, all the blends for number three. So they can read across, or they could read down that's why they do the, the shapes like that if you were ever curious if you bought this book but so we really like the handbook for reading um abeka also comes with it also has the um their blend in word book so basically it's just blend ladders at the at the front and then at the back it has um it's a back it has words so it starts out with some ladders with short vowels and then when you get all the way to the back it gets into a long oh no not yet it gets here we go it gets into some long vowels and so then it has long vowel ladders so we've used that book a lot i also have the a becca primary bible reader which i've been reading to him a lot uh him and his brothers i'll just pick a, a story um it's basically the it's the bible it's bible stories but they're just written in a way um that kids can read them when they get old enough 
And so we will uh, sometimes sit down and just read from here when we're doing Bible. I also um, have these leapfrog books. You see here that they, they u he uses like a little marker or a little pen with it. And then when you press like on certain things, it will repeat, it will read it to him. So he can, um, this book actually is one that he can do activities with. But um, if I show you like the cat in the hat, yeah, you can hold that. If I show you this one, he has like a little pen. I don't have the pen out here, but if he presses on the book, then it will read this to him. So um, we do that every once in a while, especially if I don't have time to sit down and read to him, then he can just press on the book and it will read it to him. He will not always sit and do it, but every once in a while. So I have a handful of those that we, we do. And then finally, I thought I'd show you the books that I have written for him. And um, you can get any of these books in a do in, on my website. I will leave the links below for all the downloads for these. Um, some of my older ones that I wrote a long time ago, um, I made these short vowel word books. Now, I printed them out two different ways. So you can print them out the way they come, and they'll be big like this, and then the kids will read through their short vowel words. Um, and when they get to the end, I have a section for where it says I can read and then it has all of the, the words again and then they can read through them one more time without the pictures. Um, so you can print them out like this and when, when I did this, I stapled them and then I just put tape. This is just tape so that their little fingers won't get stuck by um, staples. And... Um, these are all short vowel words, great for sounding out and learning how to um, sound out words. And so, um, so you can print them out big like this, or on your printer settings, if you choose to print two pages per sheet, then they'll come out this size. So this is how they come out if you just print them regularly, or you can print them two pages per sheet and they'll come out small like this. And then these ones I put in a book ring. And they're the same thing, I just, put them in a book ring and made them smaller. So um, so I have a ton of those that I made, so short vowel word books. And then I also made um, these books where they have to actually add the letter, so a vowel book. So this is a bug, bug, what would go here? And then they would have to say it out loud or you could, um, I actually, I have these um, in the download, they are black and white as well, so the kids can color. They could write it in there if they wanted, or you could use magnet letters, and uh, that's what I usually do with him. I have him put his magnet letter in there. So, bat, bat, and he put in a magnet letter. He put the A there. Um, so, you get the idea. These are short vowel ones. And then um, here's another one shells, bug, crab, egg. So, they'd have to put the correct short vowel in the book. And then um, you've seen these before. I have a bunch of fall books and they're miss this one's missing the beginning sounds. So he has to put the correct letter there. Um, and again, I usually have him use his magnetic letters for those. And then I have some sounded out books. So these ones um, are just like the, each phenome is separated, so they have to sound it out. Cur is one phenome, so it'd be cur, ah, b, um, because it's kind of a blend right there. So anyway, um, so that is how these books are set up. So I have two of those, just the sounded out kind of books. Um, and then I have like a bunch of books that I made him about seasons and weather. You may have seen these in other videos that I have. Um, and so these ones are just reading about the different seasons. This one is about the different seasons. And this one is about weather. Um, and then, excuse me, I, I need you to stop that. I need you to, I need you to go take that to your room. Thank you. Um, they also come in black and white, so they, they can color them and decorate them if, you, if they'd rather do that. So I have a bunch of those. And then I just made some emergent readers for him. And this whole pack is a lot of fun. I'll leave the link below if you're interested in these. Um, they come in color or black and white. I printed them all out in color. And again, I printed mine out 
half the size. So I printed out two pages per sheet so that I could save on paper. And I put mine in a book ring, but you could also just staple. This one is the zoo. Now I made these predictable so that um, very, very early readers, like he's a very early reader, can read each page. So I go to the zoo. Now all the rest of the pages are gonna be predictable until we get to the end. I see an alligator. I see a monkey. I see an elephant. And it's also getting them to recognize the sight word C and the word I. Um, so it's all predictable. So as he turns it, he knows it's gonna say, I see a, uh, and then he's going to say what he sees. And then when they get to the end, the very last page is not predictable. So a lot of times you'll have them read, they'll say, I see a, I see a, and then they'll get to the last page and they'll go, I see uh, and then they'll realize that's not the word C. And then they have to read, I like the zoo. And then each book ends with comprehension questions. So every single one of these books has comprehension questions at the very end that you can do with them when they're done. So um, I made some of them predictable like that, and then some of them are actual stories. So this one is a story, Dan the Duck. And um, it's just, Dan is a duck. Dan met a pal. I tried to do all of the words um, easy, like short vowel words um, that early readers could sound out. Dan is on a pad. That's a lily pad. Did Dan find a bug? The sun is up. Dan is hot in the sun. Dan gets in the pond. And you can ask him questions like, why, did he, why do you think he got in the pond? Well, he was hot, wasn't he? Dan is a wet duck. Dan is not hot. Now he's not hot because he, he got all wet and he cooled off. Dan is glad. Dan, and then there's the question, uh, there's the comprehension question. So, um, so I have a bunch of them. Tom the cat, Tim the dog, John and Jen, Pets, The Farm, What is Red, and a book about food, which is yum. So um, again, I'll leave a link below where you can get all of these. Um, I'm so excited to use these with my kindergartner, um, get him excited about reading and practicing sounding out words. So thanks for watching, guys, and I'll see you next time.